All right, y'all. So apparently HBO, DC, Warner Brothers, whatever, they are reworking this Green Lantern uh, series so that it focuses on John Stewart, the best Green Lantern. <laughs> Stay mad about it. Okay, so I saw this article and I just want to go through it and talk about it as we read it. So Greg Berlanti's Green Lantern HBO Max series is being redeveloped. It loses its writer. Let's talk about it. So HBO Max's uh, long gestating Green Lantern TV series is changing gears. I'm not sure. I barely heard news about this. Maybe I should have, <laughs> but I'm not sure if y'all know about it. Either way, the Green Lantern TV series obviously is live action, um, but they're reworking it here. The drama, which has been in the works since late 2019, will now focus on Jon Stewart. Woo, 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 woo. Yeah. Mm hmm. One of DC's first black superheroes. The series from executive producer Greg Berlanti was to originally have revolved around Guy Gardner and Alan Scott and had already cast Finn Whitrock and Jeremy Irvine, I guess, um, as the respective Green Lanterns. As part of the creative overhaul, writer and showrunner Seth uh, Smith has departed the series after completing scripts for a full season of eight episodes. Child, this, oh, shit. Um, sources say that Graham Smith, uh, who signed on as writer and showrunner a year after Green Lantern was announced, chose to leave the project after weathering a number of regime changes at HBO Max, its parent company, Warner Brothers Discovery, producers, Warner Brothers Television, and now DC Comics. That's a lot, so I understand. <laughs> Goddamn, <laughs> that's a lot. The decision to refocus Green Lantern arrives at a pivotal time for DC. Sources say the character of Jon Stewart was off the table to producers who envisioned the show as focusing on the first Green Lantern and openly gay Alan Scott and Guy Gardner, as well as a multitude of other Lanterns from comic book favorites uh, to never before seen heroes. With DC Comics topper Walter Hamada's recent exit, a decision was made to start over and build the show around Stewart, a character who first appeared in the early 1970s. Let me scroll down here. They're just saying that this uh, creative overhaul has nothing to do with James Gunn, that recent announcement that was made. Um, so because um, Gunn and Saffron start their jobs on November 1st of the previous Green Lantern incarnation, only Berlanti and his Warner Brothers TV-based Berlanti Productions remain attached. Um, when HBO Max announced Green Lantern in October 2019, Berlanti described it as the biggest DC show ever made with plans for the series to go to space. Insiders at the time said it was also poised to be the most expensive DC show ever made and easily the largest for HBO Max with a budget estimated in the $120 million range. House of the Dragon by comparison costs less than $200 million. So here's where we get into what Zaslav is doing with all this stuff, especially because we just, we just read that they had already had a whole full season done for this right? So the show's budget going forward is expected to be significantly less as HBO under David Zaslav's combined Warner Brothers Discovery is focusing on right-sizing its various assets. As part of the move to find an estimated $3 billion in cost savings, Zaslav and his division leaders have dropped a number of projects, including Berlanti's planned Strange Adventures, blah, 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 blah. Here it is, Warner Brothers said in a filing this week that it expects to take $2 billion to $2.5 billion uh, in tax write-downs related to content. The eight previously completed Green Lantern scripts, whatever episodes, are expected to be included in those tax write-downs as sources maintain it wasn't Smith's creative that ultimately doomed the first incarnation of the show, but rather its price tag. So it's interesting here because they obviously, you already know that Zaslav is trying, Miss Mamas is trying to find quarters in the couch. He's trying to find, he's trying to, he's trying to save coin whatever way he can. He's trying to cut costs. He's trying to cut shit down. They are already facing a class action lawsuit for cooking their numbers. It's, it's terrible. It's terrible. Right? So it's just interesting 
because it's like, okay, well, we gonna do Jon Stewart instead. Um, fuck the rest of that shit. Fuck the other ep episodes. And I'm happy that we're getting Jon Stewart. But y'all talking about the budget's gonna be significantly less that we gonna give it to. We gonna make <laughs> we gonna make this about Jon Stewart. I'm like, all right, now it better be good. It better be good. And I'm saying this as a black person who's definitely into superheroes. I, that shit just made me a little nervous because it's just like, okay, y'all would not have thought to do Jon Stewart if y'all wasn't trying to cut costs. I don't know, Miss Mamas. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. It just better be good. It better be good. That's all I'm going to say. So representatives for HBO Max, Warner's, Berlanti Productions, um, and Smith declined to comment. The HBO Max take is Berlanti's second stab at the world of Green Lantern. <laughs> now, if you, didn't, if you didn't know, he previously penned the screenplay alongside Michael Green, um, whatever, and Michael, whatever, these people, for the 2011 DC produced Ryan Reynolds starrer. That movie was met with negative reviews. That's putting it lightly, mama. <laughs> That's putting it lightly, Miss Mama. Yeah, you you damn right it was met with negative goddamn reviews and considered a flop. It grossed 219 million on a budget of 200 million. Oh my God, I didn't know it was that bad. <laughs> wow. So yeah, y'all, it's not a long article. What y'all think about this? Because it's just like, like I said, on one hand, I loved, I've always loved Jon Stewart. I don't know a whole lot about the comics. I'm just talking about as like in general, when I see him pop up, when I see him pop up on these um, animated shows, definitely loved him on Justice League Unlimited, but I do not know, or Justice League period. Um, but I do not really know a whole lot about Jon Stewart in the comics per se. But every time I've seen him on animated stuff, I just, I loved him. And I feel, also feel like, um, I don't know, do he want a date or something? Cause what's up? <laughs> it's like, I want Jon Stewart finance to come with his um, ring, his green ring and, and take me away to space. Like, that's what I want. That's what I want. But it, so I, I really am so excited to see it. But at the same time, it's just like the fact that Jon Stewart was off the table. This is what the article said. Jon Stewart was off the table. They were not even planning <laughs> on doing Jon Stewart until Zaslav came in there you know, like I said, trying to shake the piggy bank up, looking for <laughs> until Zaslav came in there trying to shake the piggy bank up, looking for coins, looking for coins. Where the coins at? That's when Zaslav came in there, like, where the coins at? Where the coins at? So y'all wasn't planning to do him at all until it was time to cut costs. It's just like I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I I don't know. That shit scares the shit out of me. That scares the, as, as especially like I said, as a black fan of superhero stuff. Like, I'm just like, girl, why does it feel like scraps? Why does it feel like y'all tossing the scraps at Jon Stewart? Don't toss him no scraps. Y'all better get this shit. So I, I, like I said, I'm excited. I wanna see what they're gonna give us. I wanna see what they're gonna serve us. Um, I'm still a little bit nervous for two things. Like I said, the first thing is that, um, <laughs> that cost thing that I said. And the second thing is that Berlanti's doing it. And, uh, that previous Green Lantern movie was not it. <laughs> Ryan Reynolds don't even acknowledge that shit, bro. Like, it was not it. It was not it. So that's kind of, it's kind of concerning me. But, I mean, if they really take the notes that people say, if they really work hard on it and um, improve whatever happens in 2011, I think there is potential there. But, I don't know. I'm going to wait for the first trailer to really, to, to really make a decision on this obviously we can't make a decision on something that has not you know been released yet but it's just i'm very on the fence about this because i don't want to get too excited and then the trailer comes and it's bullshit or it especially you, you talk about cutting costs how you cutting costs don't cut costs on a goddamn green lantern show bitch that cgi has to be perfect green lantern do you know how easy is that sh well i guess we did see it in 2011 <laughs> You know how easy that shit could look like shit? It's Green Lantern. It, the whole damn movie gonna be... <laughs> Every time that motherfucker uses powers, that's complicated as CGI. I mean, even when he's flying and glowing, right? So I just, I really want them to get it together. I'm not gonna hold my breath. I'm gonna wait until I, this this first trailer drops and then we'll talk about it when it does. But I, uh, I want them to do him justice and I, I just don't know if it's gonna happen. <laughs> Let me know what y'all think about this. 
Love y'all so much, and I will check y'all out later. Peace.